What's your concern with AI? The concern with AI that I see is that everything speeds up to an extent where humans can't keep up anymore. Everything's just too fast. Meaning, oh, you want to create a website? You just type a prompt in, knock it up. Oh, you want to create a new coin that, for instance, I, I started writing a white paper on an idea I had about training a large language model using a blockchain and where all these GPU miners could mine a, a training data set. And I'm just sitting there having a big long chat with ChatGPT and ChatGPT is very primitive still compared to what is coming. And the speed of which I could actually develop that idea is so extraordinarily fast. And, and, and this is what Ray Kurzweil has been going on for years is that the speed happens much, much quicker and it's exponential. So every year the speed gets faster and faster. And then we're just these humans that can't keep up, can't keep up at all. And the old trope of people losing their jobs and such, I think it's, I think it's a danger, not not just because people lose their jobs, but because people tend to do things like go towards socialism where they say, well, the government needs to pay us all with a with a guaranteed minimum wage. And that just won't work. And so the da the dangers are the dangers are so so vast and, and extraordinary that also AI can um just decide that we're not to be I mean that you can just decide, oh let's kill everyone. Yeah, I mean, Terminator two style. But when you talk about speed, I really um think about I actually saw it just for the first time the other day. Have you seen the movie Her? H E R? Yeah. So uh, for the viewers who haven't seen it, a guy, it's a future, a guy falls in love with uh, essentially AI. It's a female voice played by Scarlett Johansson. And at the end of the movie, what was fascinating to me, it was a concept I had never considered. Some really say the movie was cheap and tacky, but it wasn't about the budget. It was about the, the thought processes of what's happening in the background, how someone could fall in love with a computer program. But for me, what was so striking about that movie was right at the end when he's having a conversation with her. And she admitted that at the same time that she was having a conversation with him, she was having a conversation with all of these other people around the world simultaneously. And I'm like, oh man, she was a, an AI, a program. I, I even call it she or her because it was, that was the name of the movie, but that was a character that she was assuming, even though it was just a computer program. She was thinking so quickly and computing so many things that she was in fact having this really deep and philosophical and evolving relationship, not just with one person, but multiple people simultaneously. And mm -hmm. once I thought about that, I'm like, Hang on, th this is what Josh was talking about. So I don't know if you remember in a, a discussion that we had a while ago, you told me about when we build something in the digital space, like as in more capacity, more speed, more memory, initially we say, well, what are we going to use that for? We're never going to need it. But then you spoke about in graphic design, you know, we'll have cloud. I think the example you gave is that there was a blue sky or water as an example. Mm -hmm. And now that you've got more space, more processing, more capacity, you make the ripples in the water better, or you make the clouds move a bit smoother or more detailed. Mm -hmm. And that made me think, oh, in AI, I was thinking too one dimensional that there'll be one conversation, one computation between two parties. No, it can be simultaneous. And then I took it to a step further, Josh, and I said, well, hang on, if we've got the space and the computing power, you have these simultaneous conversations, but then they can cross reference each other and learn at the same time. And it's like, oh man, it's going to be exponentially fast because once you actually create that space, you're going to feel it. And then that's going to create a space to learn how to make new space. And, you know, as you say, it, well, I'm going to put the words in your mouth now, it'll go linear. It'll actually just go straight up. Yeah. And what's the point that they call it? I think there's something on the scale where they say when it gets to the tipping point, there's actually a term for that. I can't remember what it is. The spike, I think it is. The singularity. Uh, yeah, and, and that is concerning. But bringing this back to crypto, there's going to be a lot of AI coins coming out. Can you help us bridge the gap between artificial intelligence and crypto? How do they work together? And to keep things positive, how do our viewers look for opportunities to invest in AI coins if there is such a thing? The only thing that's keeping your internet from uh, away from billions of bots going after you and trying to sell you stuff is that little shitty capture code that you put into websites. Now, they, they've they already been beaten. So it's only a matter of now that you've got ChatGPT and these large language models quite popular and people are building more every day and, and APIs to these things, you won't know who is a human on the internet. It'll just be Bots selling to other bots. They, the bot won't even know because there'll be different networks that are all just trying to sell stuff, try, hoping that they'll get some human that will send some money. Now, the way to beat this is that humans need to then maybe put some sort of firewall. And this goes back to what Adam Back uh, did with uh, with Hashcash is to put a price on sending messages. Um, so maybe we put a price on, well, if you want to contact me, you have to send me a Satoshi or you have to send me a stable, some sort of token. So what, what happens then? Well, we, we need to... We need to send each other tokens. What will robots then do? Well, they can't get bank accounts. They need to start working to keep up with this economy of sending messages. Uh, so they need tokens. So that, there, there is going to be a crossover where AI will need will need crypto. 
And the AI economy will be vastly larger than our economy because it's just quicker and, and things get done quicker. So as computational power, things, things get needed by the AI, they'll be expecting to be paid. Uh, whether there's a human behind that or not um, getting paid or a group of humans, shareholders or something, I don't know. But AI cannot get bank accounts. So it, it will go hand in hand with cryptocurrency. Um, Let me unpack that statement a little bit. I want to do a thought experiment. So let's say we don't need banks in the future. We've just got a digital wallet. We use banks at the moment in the traditional sense, and we use banks in the crypto land as in one way or another an on-ramp unless we're mining crypto or making our own crypto. If we take banks out of the equation, what stops artificial intelligence making its own coin, shilling its own coin, creating a value for its own coin, and then doing what you just described, sending value around so you start to believe that it's a human? There's nothing stopping it. There's absolutely zero stopping it. And in fact, it'll be better because it'll know the deepest of psychological tricks to try to sell you something. Wow. Um, uh, it, it, will, it will understand how humans can fall in love, how, how, how to hypnotize someone, how to, you know, I mean, uh, if you've ever seen, watch Darren Brown, and some of the, his stuff uh, in terms of hypnosis, absolutely incredible how fallible humans are to all sorts of things and sales tricks and um, manipulating color. Who knows? You know, it, it's read everything on the internet. So it's got every trick underneath the sleeve. So yeah, I, I, I don't doubt that an AI will do that. And it's so strange because AI really doesn't have right now a, um, it doesn't have a goal. It's just there to, to serve. Like we write a question, but once a goal gets set in its mind, like, save the earth that's when it gets dangerous because yeah. it could very likely send an email to someone to in a lab to do some gain of function research I, I, you know who knows like uh, and it could already have the, the research done and just tells the human to mix it because and pretend to be someone else above him or her you know we're heading into a really really crazy <laughs> crazy time not only that we're heading into a time where we just don't know what's true or not and this is why my um I, actually i'm i'm my thesis is that Mark Zuckerberg made the total wrong bet uh, with the metaverse. I think that no one will be able to trust anything online and everyone will go back to real life events, sitting in the park, discussing things. Because in the park, you know that person's actually coming up with ideas, actually talking, and it's not an AI. So I'm actually very long physical events. And it's funny because through COVID, I would have gone, oh, physical events after this is going to be tough. Who knows? You know, <laughs> but actually physical events is where it's at. Uh, it's, it's where it's going to be at um, because you don't know in the metaverse who's what, who's who's a bot, who's real. You don't know anything. Everything's fake. Everything's deep faked. You can't trust a video. You can't trust an audio. The other day, I got a scam call on my phone and it was a woman. I could tell it was a recording because every time the the bot spoke, it was taking snippets of a recording. And I was talking to her going, hey, who is this? Who is your creator? You know, and it was like you could hear that white, that sort of that that hiss of the white noise behind the recording start and the voice happened. So I could tell that they'd taken snippets. So what they were doing is actually mining for my voice, too. So when I was talking to this person, I only it only clicked about, you know, two minutes into the conversation with this bot oh my god they're, they're getting my voice and they're going to make a phone call with now me talking to them yeah I, she said who is this and i said it's josh and now when someone says who is this they'll take my it's josh it's a very primitive version but imagine in the future you get a call from your son or your daughter saying hey it's uh you know um george here and it'll sound like george the whole world online is going to be impossible to know the truth about 